Hello everyone, and welcome to the CircuitPython weekly meeting for July 18th, 2022. This is the time of the week that we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Katni, and I'm sponsored by CircuitPython, or by, sponsored by CircuitPython, sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Uh, development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you wish to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add, your, or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. So if you'd like to re receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. The notes document contains timestamps to go along with the video. So you can use it to skip around and view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. After each meeting, we post a link to the next meeting's notes document uh, to the CircuitPython dev channel on Discord. And ch so check the pinned messages to find the latest notes docs so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can still leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news, which is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. Second part is state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project, a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're all up to. Third is hug reports, which is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize awesome folks in our community. Fourth is status updates, which is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. Take a couple minutes and talk about what you've been doing over the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. And finally, in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time is too long for status updates. And that is how the meeting will go. So I will get started with community news. First up, the Pi-5 RISC-V ASIC project, which is probably pronounced ASIC. Uh, the Pi-5 project is creating community-driven RISC-V-based microcontroller with the ability to easily support CircuitPython and MicroPython. They've been discussing progress on Hackster.io. The team is fundraising to pay for an engineering team to work on the Pi-5 ASIC, which there is a link there uh, to that project as well. Raspberry Pi staff make an RP2040 lightsabers. The crew at Raspberry Pi Towers made Star Wars lightsabers using Adafruit RP2040 boards with the prop maker Featherwing, CircuitPython, and 3D printing. The design is based on the Adafruit tutorial, prop maker lightsaber, and changing out the Feather M4 Express with the RP2040 based Feather. Adafruit is working on new Raspberry Pi Pico add-on board boards called Bells. Adafruit is working on new add-on boards for the Raspberry Pi Pico form factor. Quote, whenever we start making add-ons, we always do a proto board first. So it is that this is the Adafruit's first design for the Raspberry Pico add-on. It's the simplest and cheapest to start. With a wide variety of names for add-on boards, shields, capes, feather wings, hats, gizmos, etc., Adafruit wanted to name another line of their boards. As the new Pico W is being dubbed PyCow by the community. Cow-themed ideas are being used. Adafruit, after consideration, announced on their Ask an Engineer show top secret segment their add-on boards will be called bells, like cowbells. And there's a link to that top secret as well. Um, in news from around the web, Pico Touch HMI is a Raspberry Pi Pico carrier for human-machine interface projects. A single board design hosting the Raspberry Pi Pico as a surface mount module the Pico Touch HMI packs a keypad, screen, speaker, and more with CircuitPython library support. Um, next up, simulating Raspberry Pi Pico running CircuitPython with some virtual NeoPixels completely in the browser. And there's a link to Twitter for that. Dr. Patrick Cavanaugh at EuroPython 2022 discussing the Pythonic genius behind the James Webb Telescope, and there's a link to Twitter for that as well. 
And finally, a desktop web telescope image viewer with Raspberry Pi Zero displaying and display using CircuitPython. And there's a link to Twitter for that as well. So this has been uh, a preview of our CircuitPython weekly newsletter, which is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available on adafruitdaily.com, and it highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the, around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. Uh, to contribute your own news or project, you can edit next week's draft on GitHub and submit a pull request, or you can tag a tweet on circuit or tag a tweet with CircuitPython on Twitter, or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And that is community news. Um, next up is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. So this is um, where we look at the whole whole project by the by the numbers. Um, it's a statistical overview to give us an idea of the health of the project. And um, we will uh, first discuss the pro the whole the whole thing overall, and then uh, we'll discuss the core, the libraries, and Blinka separately. So first up, overall, we had 32 pull requests merged from 19 different authors. And thank you to Jeff for highlighting some new names for me. Uh, we have Pandian MN, uh, John R. BNSN, uh, Zhu Hao, Nicholas FF, and Luis Vital. Uh, and we had nine reviewers there for those 19 authors. Um, in terms of issues, we had 19 issues closed by seven people and 37 opened by 18 people. So we are net up, but that is good to see that there are so many people involved with those issues. And with that, I will turn it over to Jeff to talk about the core. Hello. So the core is the part of CircuitPython that's written in the C language that kind of powers everything. And within the core, we had 18 pull requests merged by 12 authors. It's really fun to have a full dozen. So aside from those people uh, within Adafruit, thanks to those outside, such as uh, Bergdahl and Toddbot, Nathan Y3G, and the unfamiliar name to me, Zhu Hao. Um, and we had four reviewers, uh, me, Dan, as Patrick W, and Scott. So thank you to all of them. And thanks to all of the unofficial reviewers that this list doesn't acknowledge who uh, comment on issues or pull requests as we work on them. In terms of pull requests, we do have 17 open pull requests um, spanning zero to 305 days open. And as usual, we just need to work a little harder to keep on top of those, but this number has been pretty static for a while. Issues wise, we closed 13 issues and nine people opened 14 new issues, leaving us net up one for a total of 547 open issues. Uh, we mostly track things by milestones, which shows what Adafruit prioritizes for uh, stable releases of CircuitPython. So for 7.3x, we have three open issues that we'd like to put in our next bug fix release. And for 8.0.0, we've got 48 open issues, which can represent bugs uh, or new features that we'd like before we go out with a release candidate or a stable release of version 8. We've also got a number of issues marked as long-term, and that means that Adafruit isn't uh, prioritizing working on them right now, but we always welcome community work on any of those 472 open issues. So uh, that gives you an idea of where we're concentrating our work, which is mostly on getting version 8 ready. Um, so otherwise, in a more narrative uh, sense, the exciting new stuff is Scott's work on the web workflow. Um, the upload and download of files has been pretty stable, um, depending on the board that you use. And he recently added WebSockets, so you can also access the REPL this way. And it is really slick, and we'd appreciate it if you could check that out. And then some work from uh, Dan, which uh, I finished the last little bits of while he was out last week, our support for the ESP32 original version microcontroller. And that is also merged into version eight. And we are at the point where we would love people to try it out, kick the tires and add support for the huge variety of ESP32 boards that exist out there in the wild. 
Um, I will be adding, just getting a little ahead of myself, support for a non-PS RAM ESP32 module this week. And then um, it should be a relatively easy process uh, for anybody who's interested to create a board definition. We may be doing some internally, but we want to have those two PS RAM and non-PS RAM versions available. And then, uh, yeah, get testing by the community on all of this so that we can make the ESP32 a great part of CircuitPython version 8. And that's what we've got in the core. So back to you, Katni. Thanks so much, Jeff. Next up is the libraries. So this section covers all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few extras, such as the community bundle and the co cookie cutter. Um, so total, we had 13 pull requests merged from nine different authors and six different reviewers. Uh, we had two pull requests, three pull requests merged over two weeks. One of them was 105 days old, so I'm really excited to see that we're still uh, taking care of the older PRs. And that leaves us with 27 open pull requests. We had six issues closed by four people and 21 opened by eight people, leaving us with 666 open issues. Achievement unlocked. Uh, 176 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including an actual list of all the open issues uh, and all the open PRs. If you're interested in reviewing, check out the open PRs. If you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, uh, check the code, see what it looks like to you. Uh, leave a comment, let us know. The, everything helps. And once you are comfortable with that, we can talk about leveling you up to the review team. In terms of uh, providing code or documentation, check out the list of open issues. Um, if you're new to everything, Good First Issue is a great place to start. We have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, and we're always available on Discord to help. So if you, like I said, if you're interested, uh, feel free to ask any questions that would help you get started. Um, take a look at all of that and hopefully find something that interests you. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, we have two new libraries the PCF8574 and the MMC56X3. We also have a number of updated libraries that are in the notes doc, but I will not read them off. And uh, that's where we are with the libraries. So with that, I will turn it over to Melissa to talk about Blinka. Hello. Hi. Uh, so Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this uh, week we had one pull request merged by one author and one reviewer. Um, there are four open pull requests still amongst all the different repositories. And there were zero closed issues and two open by two people. And that leaves a net of 79 open issues. There were 7,612 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are currently supporting 89 boards. Thank and that's it. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah. Next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to call out folks for doing good things. Um, we like to take time each week to highlight the awesome folks in our community and all of the excellent things that uh, folks surrounding us do. Um, and it is held as a round robin. I will get started. And then uh, if folks are text only or lurking, I will read off their notes. Um, and if they are around, I will call on them to read their notes themselves. So first up, um, a hug report to Justin, one of our internal developers, for adding the CircuitPython Day banner to circuitpython.org. To Brent and Lauren for fixing a bug in Whippersnapper regarding push button results. To Eva for picking up internal testing along with miscellaneous when needed. To Rose for checking out and responding to an LED animation PR. To Naradoc for putting in the LED animation PR. To Tectric for helping me out with some things and a very nice chat. To everyone interested in being involved in CircuitPython Day. Uh, I know there's a lot of nebulous uh, being involved at the moment, but the more we solidify things, the more I will be getting back to you, um, everybody that I've spoken to, to uh, find out what part of it they're interested in doing. Um, Hug Reports and for updating the CircuitPython Day blog post, which is what the banner on CircuitPython 
circuitpipe.org links too. Uh, to Liz and Paul Cutler for agreeing to host streams on CircuitPython Day. To Jeff for a nice chat about CircuitPython Day and some good suggestions. And a group hug. Next, I have notes from Charles Berniford, who says group hug. And next up is Dan. Thank you. Uh, just uh, I was on vacation. I'm back. Uh, thanks to Jeff for taking over the ESP32 PR, which um, while I was away, he fixed the, the remaining things, tricky things having to do with PS RAM. So thanks. OK. Great. Next up is Toshibu. Hello, can you hear me? I can. Uh, excellent. So I'd like to thank Paul Kurt Cutler for uh, doing the uh, Circuit Python show. It's a very nice way to hear about the Circuit Python community. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Foamy Guy. Thanks, Kenny. Uh, this week I have hug reports for Jeff and Dan for working on the ESP32 support. Uh, super exciting to see support coming to those devices. And then uh, to Kmatch for starting the effort on dot clock displays and uh, inviting me to help out with a uh, ESP32 S3 uh, based tablet uh, using them. Thanks. Nice. All right, next up is Jeff. All right, well, I have a hug right back at Dan for leaving me an interesting puzzle for ESP32 and laying so much excellent groundwork. Uh, to you, Katni, for getting started on the CircuitPython day planning. Uh, to Scott for tweaking the dyno moderation to work better, and also you for working on it further, Katni. And to Eva, uh, you, this may be news to you, but you're taking up some PyPI work that will help uh, CircuitPython and Thani function better together. That's what I got. Yes, that will be news. Next up is Kmatch. Thanks, Katni. Uh, so a big hug to Foamy Guy. Thank you for trying out the big CircuitPython hack tablet on your latest two live streams. Uh, particularly thanks for working through Git, Git modules issues. I was sweating that a bit, but uh, thanks for getting it all sorted out. Uh, next, uh, thanks to Scott for some guidance on two open issues on GitHub for your comments there. Uh, and last, thanks to Paul Cutler on the CircuitPython show for inviting me to be a guest. Uh, a little bit nerve wracking, but thanks for making it a positive experience. Hope it uh, works out okay. Thanks. Great. Next up is Melissa. Hello. Uh, first of all, I wanted to give a hug to NeuroDoc and Tectric for lots of good PRs, and to Brent and Lauren for helping out uh, come up with the good strategies for how to fix the whippersnapper board merge issues and group hug to everyone else. Excellent. That's it. Next up is Paul Cutler. I have a hug report for you, Katni, for including me in the CircuitPython day planning. Thank you. Um, a big thank you to Naradoc for helping me learn all about Display I/O over, over the weekend, and to Jepler for his RGB matrix guide and FFT or FFT MicroLab learn guides that were super helpful while I was learning about that. And then last to Kevin Matoka for being a guest on the show. That episode will be next week. Thanks. Excellent. Uh, next, I have some notes. Uh, Tammy makes things has a group hug, and Scott has a hug for retired wizard for continuing uh, web workflow testing, foamy guy for PRs with editing workflow, uh, Jepler for reviews, and hweaver666 for offering to help with CSS. Uh, and finally, I have notes from TechTrick, who says hug to Naradoc and Maker Melissa for helping resolve an issue with the portal-based library regarding dependencies to Katni for always helping move my CI related PRs along and to provide context and helpful suggestions to them and a group hug. And that is hug reports. Next up is status updates. Status updates is a chance to sync up on what we've been up to since the last meeting and what we're going to be up to until the next meeting. It will also be held as a round robin similar to how we just did hug reports. So with that, I will get started. Um, last week, continued on adding whippersnapper usage pages to applicable board guides, received requested CircuitPython Day graphic from Bruce and handed it over to Justin to get it added to the banner on CircuitPython.org, uh, continued CircuitPython Day planning. I had a short week. Uh, on my long weekend, I submitted my Pi Ohio talk, uh, finished clearing out the basement to uh, entirely to prep for building. This week, 
uh, more whippersnapper pages, more circuit Python day planning and another short week. Uh, it will be until the end of July. Um, and this uh, long weekend we'll be building a room in the basement. So next up is Dan. Okay, thanks. So I was away for a week of vacation. Uh, while I was away, I did read my email, so I didn't come back to uh, a lot of emails. I get like three to 500 emails a day, so I'm glad I did that. Um, and I've replied to some issues and, and PRs, and I will probably start going back to working on ESP32 SPI issues uh, to begin with. I'll be making a CircuitPython 7.3.2 release soon to fix some issues with matrix porter build. There are some problems with the frozen libraries that are there. And they're, even though we fixed the problems, you have old versions of stuff in the frozen library. So I'll be fixing that. So that's our short term plans. OK. All right. Excellent. Next up is Dashipu. Uh So I just came back from EuroPython. 2022 and uh, that was a week-long conference so on monday i ran a, a whole day uh, workshop with uh, circuit python with the pupil devices we had left over from 2019 in 2019 we, we made a conference batch running circuit python so we had uh, a couple of hundred of those badges left over uh, now and we used them for the workshop through the conference, there were also maker tables uh, on the on the ground floor. And we spent some time hacking on Secret Python and on the, those pupils uh, as well. Uh, on Friday, I had a talk about uh, making video games with uh, Secret Python. And uh, during the sprints, uh, there were a couple of people interested in Circuit Python in in contributing to Circuit Python itself. So I showed them how to how to build them how to build it how to check out the repository and and uh, get the right compiler and so on and uh, hopefully uh, they will also come to the discord to see uh, to 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 get help when they get stuck and at the end of the conference we actually gave out a couple hundred of the pew pew devices that we have left so hopefully we will have a, a influx of new users uh, after that, and also during the conference, I I brought my uh, the, the robot I'm working on the Fluffbug, and uh, I managed to finally get it to walk properly. So that's a, a nice thing. It it was sitting for two years on my desk, doing nothing. Uh, there is still a lot of room for improvement, but uh, I hope that uh, now that I got over this hump, it will go faster. That's it. Thank you. Very cool. Sounds like you got a lot done. Um, all right, next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Kenny. Um, I still have uh, siding work being done on the house, but we're getting pretty close, probably just a day or two. Uh, so I do apologize if any background noise gets through. Um, I got the graphics preparation and other more general sections of the Octopus game guide uh, down onto the page. Um, this week, I'll be cleaning up and documenting the code, as well as fishing, finishing up the parts of the guide that are more specific to that uh, that uh, Octopus game. Um, I worked on uh, getting a build of CircuitPython that KMatch created, getting a, a specific branch um, that enables the dot clock display. Um, I did get that to build successfully, and we got it loaded on the test uh, tablet on the stream uh, this weekend, so that was really cool. Um, I am going to be making a basic uh, multi-touch demo, uh, just like touch, and it will drag around some color uh, circles or something like that, I think, just to show the multi-touch capability of this device. Um, I'll be working on some graphics for a new uh, flip clock project uh, for this week, I think on like a Feather TFT device. Um, I started up uh, a new uh, clean branch for the web workflow edit page PR. Uh, I had some trouble trying to fix some unwanted changes on the old branch, so I just started fresh and got that resubmitted. Um, and so that's all cleaned up and in now. And then uh, lastly, this week I'll be working on some examples and learn guide pages for uh, vector IO and bitmap tools and other uh, lesser known and lesser documented uh, display IO features. 
Um, so that's what I got this week. Thanks. I am totally in support of the new branch uh, way to go. <laughs> I run yeah. into that more often than I want to admit. <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's nice to try to learn. It's nice to attempt to uh, recover, uh, mm -hmm. but sometimes it is ends up just being easier to start a new one. All right. Next up is Jeff. Hello. So uh, last week I found the one weird bug that was causing memory corruption on the ESP32 port. And after that, with also some help from Scott, we were able to get it merged into the core and did lots of testing on the ESP32. About 80 to 90% of stuff that I tried worked, and that's kind of a testament to the quality of the ESP IDF as well as uh, of Dan's work. And I learned about using Thonny. It's actually quite slick, and I can see why people use it. Its facility to install modules from PyPI mostly works, uh, which is a really awesome thing because it provides a way to get modules onto the ESP32 uh, boards, particularly because they don't have the USB mass storage that we're all used to. Um, still last week, I did a little work on a guide for QMK with the RP2040. I did some pull request reviews. And uh, since this was mentioned during the libraries, an old cookie cutter PR of mine was updated and merged. That was the 105 day old one, I think. So now cookie cutter works on Windows computers, which at least Lamore is really happy about. So uh, make sure though that you have the latest cookie cutter because this also takes advantage of some recently added um, features and recently added as like released in the last two or three months. Um, so yeah, you can just update um, cookie cutter through pip if that if you run into problems. So anyway, this week I may take a look at more ESP32 issues if Dan asks. And I'd like to do a small ESP32 CircuitPython project. I don't really have an idea yet, so I'll be thinking about that. Um, I wrote here that I'll be actually finishing the QMK guide for RP2040. That uh, that may come late in the week. I need a new um, board that I haven't botched the soldering on so that I can get all the photos that we want. Um, I will do PR reviews as I am able, and then whatever catches my fancy. We talked about a lot of things in the internal meeting, so I've got a million different uh, ways to go as usual and tune in next week to find out what I actually did. Thanks, Jeff. Next up is Kmatch. Thanks, Kenny. So uh, this past week, discussed some uh, ideas for collaboration with Foma Guy targeting for CircuitPython Day festivities. So I look forward to uh, what we come up with there. Uh, next is uh, un-CircuitPython related, but uh, uh, electronics related, was looking at capabilities for ultra wideband sensing for position and uh, location sensing, pretty cool capabilities. Uh, and then coming in this week, I need to get back on my bowler training aid to measure uh, where you bowl your ball on the lane. Uh, and to do that, I want to evaluate the capability of distance sensors, particularly with the optical time of flight sensor to see if I can measure a bowling ball passing by pretty quickly. So we'll see how that goes. Thanks. Excellent. Next up is Nick and Melissa. Hello. I wanted to let's see. Last week I updated the whippersnapper GitHub actions to allow dynamic importing of JSON values on a per board basis, uh, which made things a lot easier. I started working on porting edge impulse for firmware, which uses the Pico SDK over to some of our RP2040 board variants and got it running on the KB2040 uh, just fine. And uh, I had the first board that I added to CircuitPython merged in. Uh, this week I'm working, uh, I'm continuing to work with the uh, Edge Impulse firmware. And if there's time, I'll get back to um, working on web workflow changes to code.circuitpython.org. And that's where I'm at. Excellent. So next up, I think I have notes uh, from Tammy Makes Things. Um, says, uh, worked on my Matrix Portal CICD display project. I'm trying to use Async IO to do the REST API calls, so I'm figuring out how Async IO works. Planning to continue working on this and hopefully get it wrapped up this week. Next, I have some more notes from Scott. Out on vacation this week, back next Monday. Merged in serial over WebSocket. Merged in change to use a task with select to monitor open sockets for activity. Select blocks until socket is ready and then queues a background task. The select PR also included a fix where MDNS would crash due to a race condition. P 
PR pending that allows for reconfiguring the HTTP port and also reconfigures the web workflow on auto reload. We'll continue to chase issue with, with it. And finally, I have notes from TechTrick. Last week, tested out a solution for getting Dunder version attribute in libraries loaded to PyPI correctly, uh, populated without changing any of the release process or infrastructure, and it worked. Updated README for the repo that handles installing dependencies for libraries as part of the CI process, as well as prepared it to handle installing optional dependencies once they get broken out into a new file as part of the Pi Project Toml upgrade. Submitted PR to Adabot that improves detection of failing GitHub uh, failing GitHub actions run and uh, read the docs build failures and still adds them to CircuitPython.org as issues. Looked into various libraries for inspiration and guidance on how to best send bulk data over BLE for the Bluefruit Connect image transfer feature addition. This week, PR the Dunder version update to the few repos currently using PryProject.toml, implement the new Adabot changes for CI and RTD failure detection and work through any bugs. Uh, PR reviews I still haven't had a chance to follow up on and continue working on my circuit Pythonica. I think I got that right. <laughs> I just prototyped the second revision and it works great. Preparing for cost optimized third revision that is hopefully final. And that is status updates. Thanks to everyone who participated. Uh, next up is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions that may not fit into status updates. Uh, if you have a topic, please add it uh, while we're discussing other topics. Um, or I will assume that uh, there are no more topics. But we do have a topic from Deshipu, which I will turn it over to him to talk about it. Okay, so as I mentioned, I made some progress with my robot. However, the way it's programmed right now is uh, pretty messy and difficult to understand. And uh, I'd like to rewrite it uh, using async IO, or well, actually not using async IO itself, library but using async uh, function calls well and uh, the main loop from async io to run that and uh, one problem i have is that uh, the movement of the robot contains of several animations that are happening at the same time and that's what async io is perfect for because i can then uh, have a separate task for each of the animations and uh, then it's very easy to write what those animations are, what movements are going to happen. However, those animations need to be synchronized with each other. For instance, one of them needs to start when at, at, when uh, another one is in uh, at, at a particular stage, for instance, right in the middle of it. And uh, I was wondering if there is uh, some smart way of doing it uh, other than just having a global variable somewhere that I set uh, to true in the first task and then read in the second task to, to unpause it or, or things like that. Maybe someone has some ideas about that or some patterns uh, that they have seen. So, um... In the guide, I talked about using a shared object, which is sort of your, your global variable idea. Right. Um, if there are also ways to trigger, there are things called events, which I'm not sure how well they work. I think somebody used them, which is basically just another way of, it's, it's kind of a wrapper around that. But have you seen, is there something you've seen in regular Python that works for this? No, not really. I mean, this is this is something I'm exploring. This is like the interactive uh, kind of uh, there are interactive programs that I I have no experience with, and that's why. Yeah, I'm yeah. Now that I can questions. Have... <laughs> right. When I wrote the guide, it was a painful experience of trying to distill. The simplest ideas from all the examples I saw, because a lot of people write like to write really complicated code in async IO. <laughs> right. I want to get away from that. Um, so uh, that's I've all yeah I don't have any other suggestions other than say try to find 
you know, yeah, just do more research. And then if there's something that we are not supporting or is broken, we'd be happy to fix it. But it would of probably course. be in async IO. Um, if you see something in Trio or something like that, we could also think about schedule some other mechanisms that maybe are not in basic async IO. Okay, thank you. I will take a look at events for sure. And yeah. I will look at, at other, how other things do that. Thanks. Sure. Okay. All right. Excellent. That was in the weeds. And with that, it is time to wrap up. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly for July 18th, 2022. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from Adafruit at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit, visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held as usual on Monday, July 25th, 2022 at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. This meeting is held in the Adafruit Discord, which you can join at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonista's role. We hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>